Alright, so it's time to finish the Trial of Ramu and find that third runestone. I wonder if I'll have an epic boss battle with Ramu like I did with Titan. Hopefully it'll be an actual battle rather than a semi-scripted sequence. I feel like that's more likely considering having two heavily scripted sequences of flashy cutscenes in a row would probably be difficult to do, especially for a game with a troubled as troubled a development as this one, but you never know, maybe they did put the budget there. Um, so since I built up a fair amount of AP, I'm gonna purchase a few more abilities. I actually already purchased one off-screen, a uh, technique for Prompto, since I hadn't purchased one for him. Yeah, it turns out that um, you can switch the character's techniques on their equip screens. I was just a complete doofus and kind of completely ignored that somehow, despite checking the equip screens multiple times. So, uh, my bad on that. But as for the abilities I'm gonna purchase here, it's gonna be all stuff related to the armager, in the hopes of getting me to actually use it a bit more, so this will give me more bar increase from performing attacks, so I'll be able to use it more often. This one reduces the rate of depletion when it's active, so I can use it for longer once I do have it active. And then this one gives me a reward for using it more often, more AP. Hopefully these are all good purchases. The armor just seems like it's supposed to be fairly powerful after all. Ah, there you are, Boko, my Let's faithful go. steed. Let's go indeed. So is Gentiana, you know, human? Not quite. Well, not exactly gods, messengers are divine entities. Well, just like the oracle speaks to the gods for the people, the messengers speak to the people for the gods. So she's Lady Lunafreya's partner in divine. So, here's his story about Lady Lunafreya coming through town was true after all. Judging by the timing of her visit, she probably set course for the Archean as soon as she fled the Ground City. Hm. You really owe her big time, Noct. Can't wait to thank her in person. Amazing. The power of the gods in the palm of your hands. Never dreamt I'd see lore come to life before my very eyes. Leaving it. That one was pretty close. Which means we must be as well. Ah, video game interrupting its own unique dialogue with a cutscene. Uh. You'd think we'd have figured out a way to consistently avoid that, but nope, that is a problem that plagues so many games. The color's amazing. Ooh, a prismatic shard. Can I color the car rainbow with that? That'd be cool. Look, over there. I bet that's the spot lightning struck. And we're supposed to go inside? Here we are, Vosha Hollow. No telling what waits inside. Stay sharp. Always. Oh, we're drifting into the deep end. I can't quite make out how deep it runs. Only one way to find out, right? Whoa! Ah! Well, that's a lot of bats. Also, thank you, Prompto, for pronouncing the name of this place. Otherwise, I doubtless would have pronounced it incorrectly. This place. As if danger lurks round every corner. Avoid all corners. Got it. I tend to be somewhat okay at pronouncing hey, no. words in foreign languages, but uh, I definitely would not have pronounced that one as Fosha, that's for damn sure. Granted, I'm not entirely sure if the pronunciations that this game uses are actually correct to whatever language the words are derived from, because I'm pretty sure, at least if you were speaking like an English speaker, you would pronounce the sky as dusky or duske, although I could be wrong. I should be able to slip through. Let's see. I mean, it's a word in a dead language, Latin, so you can kind of pronounce it however you want, and it's technically correct. Since uh, no one's actually speaking the language right, anymore. Squeeze. Huh. Maybe for you. Pretty easy for me, though. Jeez, this fault is honestly kind of frightening. It goes on for just long enough that it seems like it might go on forever. Kind of reminds me of the uh, the Enigma of Amigawa fault, that one uh, Jinji Ito comic. Google it if you haven't. It's very good. Be quiet. Who? What? Where? I don't know. Oh, okay. More goblins. It looks like, although are they are they sitting on moons? Those must be some sort of crescent blades that they use, but. From this angle, they look like, uh, crescent moons. That's pretty cool. 
Um... Oh, I don't have the lever option for some reason. There we go, because they were in the middle of the animation, I suppose. Yeah, I'm still not sure exactly what causes the lever timer to be different. Because, um, these guys are much lower level than me, and that took a while. Uh, the weak to ice, I could bring out an ice spell, but nah. They're resistant to fire, so I shouldn't use the sword. Let's use the, uh, the dual blades. I know, get a blind side and kind of wreck them because they're lower level than me. Seriously, the recommended level for this quest is like 22, so why are there level 13 enemies? Even if it ramps up, that's a bit of a low level to start at, at least I would think. Oh, by the way, I did equip all of their new techniques except for uh, Prompto's Piercer. I haven't been using that enough to max out its level, so I want to do that before switching to his new one. But yeah, I'll be using Regroup and Dawn Hammer in the future. Regroup should come in very handy in the trickier encounters. I guess we could crawl through. Don't lose your head. So far, this dungeon is extremely linear. I wonder if it's going to open up like the Ice Cave or if it will just be linear throughout. In a low shallot. What's up, Iggy? I've come up with a new recipe. Green soup Can't curry. Hmm. Well, I'll check that out if I ever actually rest at a campfire again. Ooh. Probably shouldn't drop down there, assuming I even can. It's not on the map, so there's presumably an invisible wall. Let me actually check that out, yep. They're not gonna let you go there, unfortunately. Oh, hello. Where'd you guys come from? I think they literally just materialized out of nowhere, although to be fair, they are demons, so they can kind of do that. Well, what? Okay, camera kind of wigged out for a second there. Ooh, oh, there's bombs too, I didn't notice that. And they are thunder bombs. Are they weak to anything? I'm actually kind of worried about these guys because they do quite a bit of damage when they explode, and I haven't had much luck with keeping them from exploding in the past. So they are weak to nothing, but they absorb lightning. Well, no, they they're not they're not weak to fire and ice, is what I meant. They're weak to again. I'm pretty sure that element is light, but I have never encountered anything that allowed me to do light damage. So that's kind of worthless. Um, probably worth using the fire sword then. Hopefully, I can keep them from exploding or not. I think I might have to strike them to prevent that. Okay, what what what's happening? Okay, those guys are quite huge. Um, might actually be worth equipping ice or fire magic here. Hopefully the damage will prevent them from exploding. Uh, what should I use? Let's use the Tricast Blazara since it only has two casts left. Uh, and cast it on the slightly bigger one. Alright, there we go. That just straight up took them out. Nice. I just gotta finish off the imps, and I should be good. There's no room to swing a sword in here. Let's make sure we hit the bad guys. Oh, an Oracle card, and that's an accessory. And another Oracle Ascension coin. Still have no idea what those do, other than that they're apparently important in the end game. Uh, let's see what that accessory does. Oh yeah, I've been picking up a few accessories, but it's all just like old stuff. Stuff that's worse than the stuff I currently have, so no point in looking at that. Oracle card. A mystical card said to place fate in one's own hands. Enhances spirit mildly. Oh, that's rather boring. Just gives uh, magic defense. Oh, you know, I haven't changed the attire in quite a while, mainly because I haven't gotten any new ones. But, um, I should try out the casual outfits, I suppose. Since I haven't, uh, had them wear those before. And it should make the cutscenes more amusing if they're just wearing casual wear. Oh yeah, Ignis's casual wear in particular looked especially doofy. 
Uh, you look like such an asshole, Ignis. Oh yeah, I suppose technically Prompto has been wearing his casual wear. It looks awfully similar to his Crowns God stuff, honestly. Similar sort of jacket, I guess. There we go. Oh yeah, I also gotta remember to actually use those techniques a bit more in battle. I probably could've used that in place of the magic ends. and done fine. Yeah, seriously, if you're claustrophobic, this is not the uh, dungeon for you, that's for damn sure. Oh hey, this would be a... what? Why am I not getting into battle? Hello? Okay, there we go, that was odd. Uh, I gotta build up the tech bar first though, unfortunately. Oh wow, that did a lot of damage. Holy crap. Also, I can no longer see what's happening, camera. Yeah, the camera is not working well in these tight corners, that's for damn sure. And on we go. Indeed. Right. Oh, hello. Ambushed. Oh yeah, I should also be I haven't used the Amagi yet, but I kinda don't want to use it on such a small fight. Again, though, when I was fighting the bombs, that would have been a good chance to use it. Oh well. Next big fight I get into, I'll try and use the armager and some of the uh, new techniques. So it looks like I have two paths here, although... Okay, yeah, one goes along here, and then one goes along this way. It looks like there's some sort of ledge over here. Yeah, I dropped down, so let's check out the other path first in case it ends up being something of a point of no return. I don't want to miss any lootables. Okay, no. Yeah, so this is the path that you return by. I guess they couldn't do that because, assuming it's like the other dungeons, if you don't choose the option to just warp out Thieves' Way, it's in italics. Uh, if you don't choose the option to warp out, then you do need to make, be able to make your way physically back. Oh. Although, actually, no, that's not true because you do have the option at any time to just return to the entrance. But uh, let me check out that accessory. That's interesting. That's the first accessory I've seen, I think. That's um, been in italics. Thieves Way, an accessory exclusively for Noctis. I suppose that's why it's in italics. Reduces the MP cost of phasing. That seems incredibly good. Uh, what accessory should I replace, though? So the Amethyst Bracelet gives a boost of strength. Fences Anklet gives a boost of vitality. Um, both of those are good. I think I'll keep up the defense though. So that way if I do take a hit I don't crumple instantly or as quickly at least. Perhaps I should purchase some um, more accessory slots for Noctis, although I'd rather purchase them for his buddies first so they can actually start equipping more than one accessory as well. Ah, choices. Hello? Okay, more- seriously, could you not include like more than one enemy type? Like, even ones I've seen before I'd be fine with. Just a little bit of variety here. The other two new techs I have both require two tech bars, so... I'm not gonna ever be able to use them in small fights like this just because I'll never be able to build up the tech bar enough, but I should be able to use Piercer at least. Start getting that leveled up a bit more. Alright. So, what reward do I have for making my way through that ambush? Uh, another rusted bit. Which seems to be kind of worthless for Elamancy since it gives that you may not cast fire effect to uh, the spells, uh, or whatever spell effect it is. I suppose perhaps maybe it's used in some of the upgrade quests, I have no idea. Speaking of which, I still have that upgrade quest from uh, way back when. Does that one have a designated level or... yeah, no, it has no recommended level. The only time I've encountered curls was once in the first area, the, the desert area, I think. And they were way over leveled, or way over my level, like level 34 or something. I suppose, given that my guys are all around 27 and they'll soon be much higher next time I rest, it might actually be worth heading back there to see if I can hunt them and pick up a core whisker. Hmm. If only so, I can upgrade the Drain Lance and then presumably get another weapon upgrade quest. Well, that's something to worry about once I actually have the ability to quickly travel again, once I've gotten the Regalia back. 
You think we can fit through there? Gotta try. Hold on, I gotta check out the dead ends first. Ooh. Okay, so most of the magic flasks have been from story progression. This one technically is as well, but you can potentially miss it if you don't check the dead ends. Also, I saw purple bombs in the distance. They appeared from nowhere, and I kind of want to check them out because I haven't seen purple ones yet. Oh no, those are just the thunder ones, never mind. I didn't uh, remember the fact that they were purple. Yeah, I don't feel like fighting them again, so I'm just going to head onwards. Um... Um... Okay. <laughs> that was... <laughs> yeah, that was uh, incredibly awkward. Good job, game. Seriously though, this, I think this dungeon has the worst enemy variety of any dungeon so far. All the others have had at least two or three enemy types that you commonly fought. But this one, it's just been the goblins. I mean, I guess technically the bombs as well, but they've been less frequent. Okay, I almost have two tech bars. There we go. Let's try Dawn Hammer. Now, I wasn't able to do a follow-up. I'm not sure if that's if I just can't with that one, or if I just uh, didn't get the opportunity there because of how it hit, since that does seem to happen sometimes. Also, I'm taking a lot of damage. Oh dear. Um, I should probably use a potion on myself. There we go. There we go, got a parry attempt. Uh, but Donham, it's specifically stated as being for taking down like one enemy, but it did seem to be useful for taking down this group because it did hit multiple of them. You know, I suppose it just depends on how it hits while I'm getting uh, wrecked here. Alright, there we go. Oh wow, there's still a whole bunch of them remaining. You know what, let's use a uh, regroup then, I'm curious how that looks. Alright, so we all move over here, and I thought it said that we were supposed to get healed by it, but that did not seem to be the case. Also, okay, I am losing HP from being poisoned. Uh, let me use a high potion before I keel over. There we go. Wow, this encounter with the imps actually turned out to be considerably more difficult than the previous ones. I guess there's enough of them around that the chaos factor is increased enough that it makes it difficult to actually fight properly. I think I've mentioned this before, but the battle system here is generally a lot better when I'm fighting one, two, or three large beasties, as opposed to a whole group of small ones, because then it's more easy to keep an eye on them and do exactly what you need to do to avoid taking damage and stuff. Which is why, if they do end up using this combat system for Final Fantasy VII, I hope that's something they do. They don't deluge you with enemies, they just have like a few guys fighting you at once. That would uh, make things a lot easier to handle. But, but we'll see if that game ever actually gets finished. After all, Nomura is directing it and he directed this game for like years and it basically made no progress. I think it was true of a few other games as well. He may have... Uh, he's, he doesn't seem to be the director just from what I understand of the projects that he's handled. Oh yeah, there's also Kingdom Hearts 3 which he has been the director of. I don't remember if he's been moved off that or not, but it's famously been in developmental hell. What was that sound? <laughs> oh, that sounds like a boss. Pronto. What happened? Hey, you all right? <sighs> Over here. Oh, that's really cool. Prompto is missing, so I'm gonna have to do without him for a little bit. Pronto! Are you okay? No, I'm not okay! This place is literally the worst! And why did it have to be a snake? That thing dragged me all the way over here! Ah! Alright, I guess I gotta find Pronto and the snake. And we keep sending them back. What do you mean they just keep coming? I don't- Oh, hello, I saw them over there. Okay, oh, wow, there's uh... So speaking of tougher enemies, some hop goblins, upgraded variants, and then a mind flayer down there. Well, I guess I'll get to there when I get to it. Okay, this is annoying automatically being in the battle because I can't loot. I wonder if that's because I can't stay in place long enough to get the prompt because of the wait screen. Like, if I switch to the active battle mode, would I be able to do that? Hmm. You know, that's worth testing out, I think. Yeah, for whatever reason, 
you only seem to be able to change the battle mode from this menu here. You can't quick do it in any fashion, which is really weird considering that active mode is a lot more fluid and wait mode is something you need if you want to know the enemy's resistances, so they're both important. It's not like a pick and choose thing, you do want to use both of them ideally, but the game doesn't actually let you do that. Um, I don't remember where it is in the options. Under controls? No. Uh, camera, minimap, vibration... Um, oh, combat probably. Yep, there we go. So let's switch it to active, at least for a second. Nope, okay, hey, it's because I'm in right? battle period that I can't loot it, which is Over annoying. Here. I might actually want to wander back through yeah. here afterwards so I can pick up those lootables. We'll see. Or I might just be fed up with the place when I'm done with it and want to quick exit out. Everything okay? Alright, let's try my first instance of fighting in a long time without using um, wait mode. See how well that goes. Wait, why can- oh, okay, Prompto's fine. I didn't even notice that I uh, recovered him, or that I got to where he was located. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna use magic. Should at least take out the bomb if nothing else, and do a fair bit of damage to everyone else. Yep, there we go, that seemed to work pretty effectively. There we go, that was pretty effective. Glad you were there. Is it just me? Or is it getting harder to see? Nah, right, I'm still in battle mode apparently. Ah! That's it. Let's try a Don Hammer again, see if I can't get the follow-up prompt for this time. Nope. Okay, maybe I'll try it once more against um, the Naga whenever I do end up finding that. Maybe it needs to be against the big single target for there to be a follow-up or something. Okay, I'm getting kind of back to you again. Uh, let me switch to a weapon that does not drain my HP. That'll help that, I think. Oh, oh hop goblins to deal with. Oh, wow, they are considerably larger. They're not just a pallet swap, I think. <laughs> I didn't realize that. They also, they also seem completely unable to actually come down the ledge after me, which amuses me to no end. Um, try using Pierso, I guess. Since Don Hammer doesn't seem to be the most effective since I can't get that follow-up. There we go. Now they're both knocked down and I should be able to do some good damage to them. Okay, well, they were actually less threatening than that group of smaller goblins I fought earlier. I'm dying of thirst here. I'm starving to death. Oh, okay. I exited battle and then I get immediately get into another one. Sure game. Oh, I don't have any uh, enough tech bar built up. I'm definitely gonna want to focus on that thunder bomb though. That's for damn sure. Ooh, that's quite a bit of damage. I don't want him exploding and wrecking my team. But there we go. Yeah, when it's just one and I can focus on it, they're actually not all that threatening. It's when there's a whole bunch of them that I have to keep track of and prevent from exploding that it's difficult. Um, why can't I use piercers? Prompter like too far away or something? I don't know. Maybe he was in the middle of doing something. Still so many intricacies to the combat that I don't quite understand. Outstanding, Yep. Okay, so I seem to be out of battle mode now, so presumably I should be able to go back and uh, pick up those bits of loot that I saw scattered about the place. So since I'm right nearby, I might as well do that immediately. Let's see if it was worthwhile. Ooh, a titanium bangle. I don't think that's necessarily an upgrade for any of the characters that do have a bangle on them. But I think that's largely because I picked up that really good one from the Justice Monsters 5 minigame. So if I hadn't done that, I think it would have been worthwhile. And hey, yep, Phoenix down. It only took me like a minute to come back here, so yeah, that was definitely worth it. I need as many revival items as I can get my hands on for the tougher fights. Alright, so down here I have a few paths I can go down, it looks like, or two of them. 
Nope, okay, yeah, three paths. One looks to definitively lead backwards, although, for all I know, it could just end up curving around and end up being the path to progress, but assuming it leads backwards to a dead end, I'm gonna head down this one first. Hopefully I'm correct. Ooh. Okay, I thought I, I thought I saw a lootable, but it must just have been a bit of brightness off in the distance or something. Yep, totally a dead end. Ooh, and what do we have here? Might hey, fetch a blue choker. That's a new accessory. Let's see what that does. A blue choker with a stylish mate finish increases HP recovery rate moderately. Oh yeah, I, I had a green choker way back when. I have no idea how much it increases the HP recovery rate though, uh, are my guys missing HP? Ooh, Noctis actually is. I don't know if um, increasing the HP recovery rate ma means to just your uh, current HP or your max HP that you've lost. At any rate, I don't think I'd be able to test that out here because my max HP is actually not recovering, presumably because I'm in a dungeon. I guess that only happens when you're out in the overworld. Well, if I get to a point where I'm out of battle and I'm still recovering HP, I'll slap on that blue choker and see if it speeds things up considerably or not. Because if it's a, a powerful enough regeneration, that actually might be worth having on in battle. Oh, I keep pressing down to bring up the map. Again, that's a let it die thing. Ooh, hello. And a debased banknote, okay. <laughs> kind of want to check out the... Okay, I'm not actually in a battle. Again, a weird instance of them spawning and then me not actually getting into a fight right away. Uh, well, it's on my mind. Let me check out that debased banknote. Defunct paper currency found on the ground. It has some value and could fetch a decent price. Uh, what effect does it have in elements? Oh, wow. I didn't realize I could scroll this. I actually have two empty flasks. I should make some more spells then while I'm thinking about it, especially in case I come across any more draw spots. So I have two thunder, one fire, and one blizzard, one ice. So let's make a fire spell and an ice spell. Alright, so let's see what the uh, debased banknote does. Oh, it's an expert cast. Yeah, not going to use that then. I want to try and avoid getting experience so I don't get too overleveled. Um, could use a catablepus fang. Ooh, probably better to use ingredients actually, although I do want to keep a few of these to see if I can make whatever recipe Ignis um, thought up when I pick those up. Ooh, you know, Curse Cast would probably be a good effect to do against bosses, actually. Lower their offense so they're overall a bit less dangerous. Do I have anything that makes a more potent Curse Cast, though, under ingredients? Uh, it seems to be the same potency, and I have a whole bunch more of these peppers, so actually, let's use those. There we go. Curse cast fire times three. Oh wow, that actually greatly increases the attack down level if I use more peppers, so yeah. Let's um get that up to 90. There we go. So now I have a alternate fire spell at my ready. And then I want to do a blizzard one. What effect should I apply to this one, though? Again, I'd like to do something different than a multicast. Uh, might be worth doing a Venom cast, actually. What applied that? It was the Fungua. Funga, however you pronounce that. And I have a bunch of those, so I should be able to make the effect fairly potent. Let's make it a uh, level 50. Alright, there we go. Sorry for wasting time here, but I like having my uh, magic flask full. So that way I have as many spells as I need. One for any opportunity. And yep, here I am actually getting into a battle with these uh, imps now. You know, I kind of am enjoying the combat a bit more in active mode. It's a bit... I don't have as many chances to uh, catch my breath. I mean, I can't open the menu at any time, but I can't just stop doing something and have it pause, which is a lot more convenient. But the way the fights just flow so much more smoothly is very nice. That said, I think I may end up switching back to um, wait mode just because being able to know their resistances, mainly for effective use of magic, is really useful. Like being able to just nuke an enemy group because I hit them with their elemental weakness with a powerful spell is super damn convenient. Alright, so have I checked out all the paths now? Yep, so this must be the way forward. Oh, 
Hopefully I'm nearing the end. I really want to get to doing a boss fight. She's here. I just know it. Show yourself already! Cool it. Huh, of course the one draw spot I come across is for the element that I'm full of. Not that that's surprising. It would make sense for lightning to be in Ramu's cave. Ooh, this looks like the perfect spot for a big boss battle. Eh? Eh? Game? Game? Or maybe they'll just ambush me with an enemy group, or not ambush me at all. Um, I can't seem to run here though, which is kind of annoying. See? Oh! I told you! There she is! That's her! Do something not! Don't ask me, do it yourself. Oh, I can speak to her. Um, I'm honestly not sure which option to take here. Uh, let's humor her, I suppose. That was not the correct choice, I think. Or maybe it was, since maybe if I chose the other one I wouldn't have been able to fight her. Yep, start killing it. Um, So I have no idea- yeah, I think I'm gonna immediately switch back to wait mode just so that I can uh, know what she's weak to elementally. I really wish I could Libra in active mode. I mean, I do have that one ability of Ignis's that's supposed to Libra enemies when I fight them. But it doesn't seem to proc especially reliably, so meh. Maybe there's another ability on the tree that lets me Libra in active mode. I'll have to look at the trees more closely, because if there is, I'm totally getting that and then just switching to active mode full time. But for now, back to wait mode. I mean, I guess I could always do wait mode at the beginning for boss fights, see what they're elementally weak to with Libra, and then switch back to active mode, but that's also kind of a pain in the ass having to constantly do that. So I don't think that's what I'm going to do. So she is weak to ice? Light, daggers, and greatswords. Well, I just made a nice spell, so uh, let's use that. Although, which one should I use? Should I use the Quint cast that I had before, or the Venom cast? I kind of get the feeling that Venom poison isn't going to be too effective on a giant snake lady like that. Like, I get the feeling she'd be resistant to it, so let's just use the good old Quint cast. <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty effective. She's resistant to fire, so I'm not going to want to use that. I'm not sure if the Blade of the Mystic, like, again, I don't know if these actually count as other weapon categories. Like, the Blade of the Mystic seems like it might be count as a, counting as a greatsword, because it has fairly slow swings. But then you have something like the Swords of the Wanderer, which are uh, dual swords, which have no real equivalent among the standard weapon classes. So I have no idea if these count towards like the re standard resistances that the enemies have or not. It's possible that they're entirely exempt from them. Um, either way, let's use the Blade of the Mystic. I don't feel like uh, equipping another weapon like a great so- oh, what? I guess I got kind of slowed down by my own ice magic there, kind of a bit awkward. Oh, okay, wow, she was uh, whacking my party with the tail, which I did not see at all. Kind of hard to tell with all the chaos. Yeah, I guess wait mode is really helpful here because otherwise I would have to, I think, navigate the menu while in pause time, while in uh, active time. Because I don't think it pauses it if you're in active mode in the item menu. Um, shit, what should I use? You know, let's use the Mega Elixir. Oh, not quick enough for Prompto though, god damn it. Uh, I'm gonna have to use a Phoenix down on him, good thing I picked up that one from earlier. Oh wow, Naga is almost dead though. That ice uh, really did work its magic. <laughs> um, oh, I still haven't used the goddamn Armager, but she's almost dead, so I don't want to use it just yet. Let me uh, see if I can finish her off with Dawn Hammer. She seems like the perfect target for it. Her. 
I ain't going near it. Oh. Do you guys see anything? Nothing that's gonna snatch you up. Well, that was a pretty cool finisher as I thought it would be. But yeah, it doesn't seem to have a follow-up that Noctis can do, one of those QTE uh, button prompts, which is rather odd. So she appeared when I went down this way, and that plus the uh, location of the quest marker makes me think that this is progress. But I'm not sure. I'm gonna assume that it is progress and check out the other pathway first. It's possible that this other pathway over here could lead to another one of those vault things, like the one I found in that ice cave dungeon, whatever the hell it was called. It'd be cool if there were multiple ones of those and you remember them to come back when you get the ability to open them and get like ridiculous weapons or something like that. Oh, lucky day! Look what we have here. Awesome. So we found yet another door. <sighs> Let's get this over with. As you wish. I was hoping you'd say that. Hey, I was correct in my prediction. Nice. And it is locked just like the other one. No luck. Guess we'll need another key. The key question is, where do we look? Uh. I am curious when I'll get the ability to unlock those. That very much seems like it'd be a very late game thing. Like you do a whole bunch of story stuff and then you have the one final point of no return before you do the finale of the game. And that's when you get the ability to unlock them to give all your guys like super gear for the final boss. Or it could be post-game content. There is a post-game in this game from what I understand with super bosses. And hell, maybe that's what it is. Maybe there are super bosses hiding behind those doors. I have no clue. That's the last runestone. Oh, finally. Alright, you're up, Noct. Is it the power of the storm? Eh, I expected more fire and brimstone. Some gods are friendlier than others, I guess. But not all of them. Poor Luna. Perhaps you'd better console her in person. Just a boat right away. Lose that scowl along the way. Well, do. I like that they uh, specifically reference the fact that acquiring this symbol was nowhere near as flashy or arduous as uh, acquiring Titans was. So Noctis acquired the Mark of the Fulgurian, a symbol of Ramu's favor. Huh. Hey, it stopped raining. Guess Rama finally got sick of showers. Up there, it's huge. Uh, way bigger than the last one we saw. Yeah? Your car. Yeah. Well, I found her, but she's at a base. Oh. Now I can handle garage folk, no problem. But sweet talk in the Empire? That'll take some doing. Don't worry about it. Yeah. We'll figure it out. You sure about that? Yeah. Thanks for the heads up. Later. Who was that? Cindy. What? You can't talk to her like that. Yeah, I can. I just did. And does she have any choice words for you? Yeah, the Regalia's at an Imperial base. Oh boy. Guess that just leaves one question. When do we retrieve her? I'd say now. A new practical drill on the Royal Arms has been added. Well, that's kind of out of nowhere. This is nothing more than conjecture, but I suspect that ship was due to arrive far earlier. The thunder and lightning must have slowed it down. There's a chance they intend to transport the Regalia back to Niflheim. 
We ought to thank the Thunder God for buying us some time. But that time is running out. Yeah, let's run in and ride off. You know, I just had a thought. What if it turns out that the Vagalia is some sort of mystical artifact of the Lucian line? And it has some sort of magical properties or something like that and that's why the Empire took it. Not just to make their traveling more difficult, but specifically because it was valuable. I really hope that's the case because that'd be goofy as shit, 